Next month, Sal Grover, founder and CEO of Giggle, a female social network, is being taken to Australia's federal court for alleged gender identity discrimination. Now, this has occurred because she did not allow a male who identifies as female to use this female-only platform. Uh, a trans activist, Roxanne Tickle, is seeking damages, a written apology and complete access to the platform. And the case could have major implications around the world. And Sal Grover joins me now to tell us more. Sal, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. OK. It's a long story and a lot of people here won't have heard of it because, of course, the media aren't covering this generally. So let's start with what happened. What was Giggle? Why did you set it up? So basically, um, my mum and I created a female-only social network. We wanted women to just have a female-only space in the palm of their hand. I had no idea of this gender identity ideology at the time. This is 2018, 2019. I'd come from Hollywood. I was sort of in that Me Too world. Um, and we laugh quite frequently of like, what are the odds of creating a um, female only platform at the one time in human history when anyone's having any kind of debate over what that is. But it was a place for women to find roommates, freelance work, connect for um, lesbian dating or just to have a voice and speak freely. You had no sense this was controversial. No. I mean, quite the opposite, because of I course... I thought that there would maybe be some men, you know, there's always that men are like, don't women have enough? Like, I thought there'd be a little bit of that. Yeah. But I, I literally did not think that anyone would go, men or women, you have to let them on. Yes. It never occurred and, to me. And so this is one particular activist, Roxanne Tickle. Have I got that name right? Yeah, Roxy Tickle. OK, it just sounds made up, doesn't it? But um... Tickle v. Giggle, I mean, like... Like yeah. <laughs> my previous life as a screenwriter, if I was writing a screenplay about the sex versus gender debate and I made the central court case to Giggle, Giggle, the first script note I would have gotten was it's two on the nose. It's two on the nose. It's not, it's <laughs> like not that possible. No one's going to believe that. But that, that literally is. What How it is. did it get to the court situation? though? Because surely like, if you're saying men aren't allowed, why didn't this tickle guy just say, OK, well, like, this isn't for me? Yeah, you'd think. Um, no. So basically, um, so he he. Um, onboarded the app, I removed him. I didn't, I don't remember removing him. It was quite, thousands of men yeah. frequently would try to get on the app. A few would get through, we'd just remove them. Um, and it, it should be noted, I did not know that this person was transgender, had a gender identity, nothing. I saw a picture of a man and I acted accordingly. Yeah. And how could I know that someone has a gender identity? Yeah, of it's, course. I mean, it's, it's that you could tell me right now that you have one, Either I believe you or I don't. Yeah, yeah. You well, know it's what like I mean? saying, you could say it. It's like telling an, uh, an atheist, I have a soul. Yes. And so do you, and uh, insisting that you believe. Yes, it's just so happened it's been legislated. So this yeah. is the problem, isn't it? It's at, uh, Australia's federal court. It's gone that high. Mm. Uh, so what, how is this going now with the court case? What's so happening? basically, he did an Australian Human Rights Commission complaint against me, um, at me and Giggle. So it was sort of two things at the same time um, for gender identity discrimination. And to settle it in the Australian Human Rights Commission, which is basically a, a place you can settle things before they escalate to court. But I would have had to set, like, let him on, let all men who claim to be women on the app go to sex and gender education, which could only be re-education, yes. and um, moderate all contents so not to offend men who claim to be women. women. Is, and I was lot, like, no. A lot of apps are doing that. I mean, there are, there are lesbian dating apps which have people with beards. Yeah. Who say they're she, her. Men with beards, yeah. yeah well, they're men. Yeah. And, and, and they're not even making the slightest effort not to look like men. So, I mean, it's odd. Not that that would excuse it. Yeah, it, it, it's exactly. Like, I mean, I don't have any distinction between a man who makes effort and a man who doesn't. A man is a man. But um, basically, uh, because by me saying no to all of that, um, he filed in federal court. And that's where we are now. In two weeks, two weeks on Tuesday, we go to federal court to find out what a woman is. It's the first big what is a woman case. It's but, sex versus gender identity. But I think a lot of people will be shocked by this because they would have said, OK, you might say, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a debate going on in London about the Garrett Club. Should women be allowed into mm -hmm. that kind of thing? But this, you're talking about a dating site. You know, I have gay male friends who are on Grindr who say mm -hmm. it's full of women now. Yeah. I mean, that, that, you know, sexual orientation is a form of discrimination. No, completely. I mean, it's, it is time for, I think, gay men to go and create a new space. I mean, Grindr is, it's gone. Like, you can't, you can't get it back. It's been so infiltrated by yes. this nonsense that just, like, sort of let it go. Let them have it. Go and create a new one. I, I think that with that, all of the institutions, I think that that's what has to happen. Um, but 
that being said, I am the person who did go and create a new one, and so this yes. is what you're in for. OK, so I want to just broaden this out, because this has ramifications uh, across the world, doesn't it? Yeah. But before we get into that, can you just explain to me about the Australia situation? There are certain a a areas in Australia at the moment where it is illegal for women to gather without, without men. Yeah. You know, you can't have a, an all-woman uh, gathering, is that right? Basically, yeah. I mean, um, there was an organisation called the Lesbian Action Group who applied to the Australian Human Rights Commission for an exemption to hold a um, female-only lesbian event, which, like, there's any other kind of lesbian, of course, like, it's yeah, just implied yeah. lesbian would be female-only, but because of all of this nonsense. And the Australian Human Rights Commission said no. And so I knew that they were going to say no because the Australian Human Rights Commission has intervened in my case, yes. in Tickle V Giggle, um, as... It does Alec sound Houston. funny every time you say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like a publisher. My last name's Grover. Like, it's literally, it's a pantomime. Um, <laughs> but, no, basically, um, the AHRC intervened as Amicus Curie in Tickle V Giggle. Yes. And they're on the side of gender identity. So, based, they intervened saying there's a conflict here. We understand between sex and gender identity, but we're going to solve it with gender identity. Well, people don't understand how far it's gone in Australia, I don't think, because yes. it's in all the political parties as well. Yep. I mean, I know it is here, but it's, it's worse in Australia, isn't it? It's worse in Australia because the fourth estate is completely captured, so we don't really have this. Yes. So, I'm in the UK because in Australia, I have emailed journalists, I kid you not, every day yes. for a year. No one will platform me. No one will talk about this case. So the uh, the main news channel over there is ABC, isn't it? Yeah. Won't even mention that this is happening. No, I mean the ABC. It's, it's even worse than the BBC. They're they're beyond like the band playing while the Titanic sinks. Like they're in the yes. kitchen making breakfast, thinking that there's going to be a meal the next morning. <laughs> yes. Like they are going down with the ship. But it, what's interesting to me is that they don't even. Um, platform it from the other side. No. You would think, because usually they celebrate, like, you know, it's either anything a trans person does, they'll celebrate, or they'll say this person's so oppressed, but th they're not saying anything about it. Isn't that them. interesting? We've got a similar thing with the BBC here, ignoring the WPATH files, which we've yeah. spoken about before. Sal, can you tell us a bit more about why this is going to have ramifications for the world, not just what's happening in Australia? OK, so part of our defence in it is a constitutional challenge, and this is because Australia put gender identity into our Sex Discrimination Act in 2013. The Julia Gillard government, um, Australia's first female prime minister, um, put gender identity into the Sex Discrimination Act and took out the definitions of sex, man and woman. Right. You would have thought that's quite fundamental to it. Well, we're basically in the situation where we're supposed to believe that the Sex Discrimination Act has concrete definitions for, like, discrimination and act, but not sex, basically. Right. Um, but gender identity has the definition of, basically, gender identity is gender identity. It's circular. It's just well, mannerisms or well, something. Well, I always ask uh, trans activists what they mean by it. No one can give me a, a successful definition. Well, a few weeks ago, you had um, Robin Moyer White, I think his name is, a, a trans activist, Barrister, no less, who you asked him what a um, what is gender identity, and he couldn't explain it. I'm being taken to federal court for discrimination of gender identity that someone even who claims to have a gender identity can't even um, define what it is. Well, Helen Joyce says it's something like a sexed soul. Exactly. So imagine legislating a soul, basically. Right. I mean, and how would anybody know? I mean, we don't. This is just made up concepts. But, but, this, but this doesn't just, I mean, you know, in Australia. So, well, let's firstly, if yeah. you were to lose this case in a couple of weeks, what would the ramifications be for uh, law in Australia? Well, so it's, it's not just Australia. It's, it is globally because basically Australia's Sex Discrimination Act um, incorporated CEDAW very much in full. So CEDAW is the Convention of the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. It is a UN convention and it is signed by 189 countries around the world, the UK being one of them. The only countries that haven't signed it are the countries you'd expect not to sign it. Yes. Um, but all the good ones have. And so CEDAW is a document that is based in biology, yes. in reality. It is females, m that men are not women. You could e very much say that it is um, against any form of what we were seeing now as gender because it's actually against any sort of sex stereotype discrimination of women, which right. I would argue that a man claiming to be a woman is a sex stereotype discrimination against a woman. So if you lose the case, then CEDAW has to be updated, is that right? Um, so if we lose the case, 
If we lose the case, it basically means that in international law, woman is not defined as an adult human female. It, it, women's rights cease to exist. It, it, woman is a legal category that any man can identify into. Now, in a way, that's how it is at the moment. But what we're doing is we're going in and defending CEDAW and re-establishing that that's not how it should right. be. That it is very clear that CEDAW is female and a woman is an adult human female. And once we've established that, other countries like the UK, Canada, New Zealand, many countries in Europe that have all signed this can go and cite this case and this precedent and go, here we go, please give us our sex waste rights. Back. So the stakes are pretty high. Yeah, I just wanted to create an app for women. I yeah. was not expecting to yeah, do yeah. this. So I'm like, oh gosh, this is a lot of pressure. Yeah. How do you think it will go? Well, on a good day, I think like it's a slam dunk. I, it, it's a woman is an adult human female. Men can't be women, of course. I mean, this is just the truth. It's reality. This is objective. I mean, you can go and claim to be a woman if you're a man, if you want. Like that's freedom of belief. Think yes. whatever you want about yourself. I don't really care. But I, I care if you are forcing me to believe it. Yes. And so that's why where I go, like this case, like this situation in general is even bigger than just women's rights because it is freedom belief and it's why men should care about it. It's why anybody, even even if you are trans, you should care about it. You should care about having your right to freedom of belief. Yes. Because if you if you don't imagine not imagine, imagine not being able to believe that you're a woman. Imagine that being legislated against. Well, that would be your rights being taken away. Well, our rights of actual reality are being yes, taken away from the us point. right now. OK, so the stakes are very high. We'll see how it goes. It's a couple, two weeks time. Yeah. Um, Good luck with it. Um, hopefully it will go the right way. Yeah. Um, you have a crowdfunder. We do, yeah. Um, how can people help you with this? So basically, um, it, basically it's the equivalent of £250,000 is how much it costs. So it's 500000 Australian dollars. Um, if we have to go to the High Court, it will be another 500000 Australian dollars. So we have a crowdfunder. It's giggleCrowdfund.com. And more information about the case, just about the legislation, about CEDAW, the constitutional challenge, it is... It's all there. It's all there at uh, Giggle... Uh, GiggleCrowdFund.com. OK, well, we'll see how it goes. Sal Grover, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.